Well, it's really, really very simple to install the propellers on your quadcopter, but a minor mistake installing the propellers wrong on your quadcopter will cause an instant crash or flip while trying to take off. You might get injured if you are very close to the quadcopter. So make sure to install the clockwise and counterclockwise propellers right. You can use uh, the DJI user manual that actually shows how to install uh, the propellers and which way the motors spin. But here, let me show you. If your quadcopter facing away from you, that's the head. It's facing away. All right. That's the rear section. That's the forward section. So this one is counterclockwise rotation. Left clockwise rotation. Similarly, follow this counterclockwise rotation and follow this clockwise rotation. Okay, so counterclockwise, counterclockwise, and clockwise, and clockwise. All right, let me put some pointers here on the screen so you can see. All right, now you understand which propeller goes where. Now that you understand which propeller goes where, get your propellers out. It could be 11 inch propellers and 10 inch propellers. 10 inch Mark II propellers will install differently and on OFM 650 SV2, your propellers will install differently. So two types of propellers, okay? These are the Mark II propellers. They have three holes in the middle, all right? And they need two screws to fit on your motors. OFM 650 SV2 and 650 V4 SE or MPQ V1 quadcopters, they can take all kind of propellers. If you use the propeller adopters on the motors, like these silver ones, okay, or black ones, depending on the motor type, then you will go and use this kind of propellers with a single hole in the middle, okay. But if you remove the propeller adopters, okay, you can use. Mark II propellers with three holes in there, okay, central and the left right you will need two screws to fix them. So it's pretty pretty easy to figure out how to actually fix them. Right now we have the uh, propeller adopter so we will go with the single hole propeller which is really really easy to mount. In order to mount the single hole propellers you should have these black rings. Normally after the test flight I will leave the rings on the motor adopters okay motor propeller adopter so double check always if you have the black rings on the motor propeller adopters if not then you should have them in the box somewhere with the propellers so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the black ring in the middle of the hole right here okay you can see it on every propeller now remember how to figure out which propeller is clockwise and counterclockwise so remember according to the shape of the propeller it should spin in a way that it should blow the air downwards, not the upwards. So you can easily figure out if this propeller spins counterclockwise, it's going to blow the air downward. So accordingly, after you have figured it out, put the propellers right on your motors. So let's do it. Tell me, which one is counterclockwise? <clears throat> of course, that one on the front. So you put the counterclockwise propeller on it and see if it spins counterclockwise, it should blow the air downward. Which one is clockwise? Clockwise on the front, left side. Put the propeller on and see if you spin in the right direction, it should put blow the air downward. Follow counterclockwise which one this one spin it it should blow the air downward yes so that's the right spinning direction and of course the last one would be always right because you have no more choices left spin it and it should blow the air downwards fine now go ahead and grab your blue Loctite don't forget it this is a lifesaver you don't want to see your propeller spinning away or whooshing out during the flight okay it's gonna be very very bad use a tad 
little Loctite on top. This saves your life of your quadcopter often and your life from heart attack seeing your expensive quadcopter going down on the first flight. So this is not only your quadcopter lifesaver but also yours. Saves you from a heart attack. Alright, go ahead and tighten the top cones. So your machine is ready for flight and of course before flight uh, GPS compass calibration. Now everything is to be done outdoors so we will go outside and do it. Now let me show you how the other type of propeller is mounted. On your OFM 650 SVT or MPQ V1 you will have the motors which will take the propellers this way. Uh, the propellers mark two propellers with three holes in them. So you can see you will have propeller uh, so you can see you will have proper hardware accessories to mount your propellers, mark two propellers on your motors this way. You will have a top uh, retainer plate on it and then two screws and there must be a little little uh, silver ring that will actually secure the propeller right in the middle. Okay, so you will mount the propellers on V2 machines uh, like OFM 650S V2 or OFM 650 uh, MPQ V1. Alright, so next everything is to be done outside and luckily we have sunny weather. So let's pack it up and go out. All right, now that we are outside, after doing all those pre-flight setups at home, after confirming everything is running good, now it's time we uh, fly. And before flight, we need to do compass calibration. So before the compass calibration, I would like to point your attention to one thing, and that is GPS arrow, that is GPS antenna direction, okay? Normally, you see the GPS antenna has an arrow on it, okay, right there. Um, in China, it's pointing straight ahead, okay, to the forward section of the quadcopter. But this GPS antenna arrow must point to a certain direction according to your country's magnetic declination values, okay? So if your values are uh, 3 degrees something or 6 degrees, you need to turn the antennas right or left to point this arrow 3 or 6 degrees. Otherwise, you will not have a good GPS position hold. So before doing this flight on your OFM machines, must check your magnetic declination of your area and accordingly make sure the antenna pointing in the right direction. After that, we can go ahead and do the GPS compass calibration. So let's just do it. So I hope you have studied the DJI NASA user manual that actually shows uh, how DJI NASA or the flight controller communicates with you using the LED color patterns, okay? And uh, you need to memorize those, okay? So I'm not gonna describe in details what three red blinking LEDs or six blinking green LEDs do. So I assume you have studied your things. We will take it from here, turn the radio on, Make sure all the switches are on their default position. Power up the quadcopter and wait for the GPS to find all the satellites. In manual mode, when your quad is in manual mode, you can easily figure it out by seeing the LED. It's blinking three times in red. This means no satellites. Two times in red means some satellites. And um, zero, I mean, not blinking at all means you have all the satellites and you are good to do compass calibration. Uh, normally you can do the compass calibration without finding all the satellites, but I prefer to do it when it has all the satellites. Green LED flashing means it has recorded the home location. It will always return back home here if the field safe activates. All right. Doing the GPS compass calibration is very easy. Your switch E, flight mode switch, flip it up, up and down a couple of times. And your LED is solid orange. At this moment you need to rotate at this moment, you need to rotate your quadcopter horizontally 360 degrees until the LED turns green. There you go. Now, head down and rotate 360 degrees again until the LED goes off. That's it. You have done your compass calibration. Disconnect the power and wait for five, five seconds or more. Then connect power again, just to be safe. I have had worse crashes when I flew right after the GPS compass calibration without turning the power off. So I always turn the power off and turn it on again. 
wait for all the satellites, which should be there already, and you're good to fly. Thank you.